Welcome back to the channel and today I got some new knives, new gear, new stuff to share with y'all. First up, we had the Pyrotech Kraken. Y'all seen this on the channel before and I got some new scales. Let's see how easy it is to swap these out being that they're magnetic scales. I did already check this out and I took the fire starter stuff in here <laughs> out but it comes with this little thin leather slip that holds the scales to more hardware. A new pocket clip with the same finish on it. So I have that like cracked ice finish on it. It also comes with the filler tab as well. Take this off. They, it holds them on there pretty darn good. My review of the Kraken should be going live soon. I think I got to take that screw out right there. That's holding that pocket clip. First time I've take, taken part of that side. Now I should be able to pop these scales off. There we go. So here's a look at the scales. Beautiful. They look really reflective in the sunlight. Show you how the pocket clip works. So it doesn't move, you have this little lip right here. And then you have the, the screw here and here. Let's put the pocket clip side on first. Here's the inside, everything's done very nicely. So, slap that side on. Nice, tight fitment, I could, I could hear it going in. Okay, I hooked the back side. Yeah, I guess if you, if you feel like taking this thing apart, you can put the second screw in there, but I don't think you have to have it because mine didn't have it. We'll see. We'll just put one screw in there for now. And if I ever take this thing apart completely, then I'll put that second screw in there. I think that's why mine only had that one. We'll see. Yeah, no movement whatsoever because it's got the milled out spot and it's nice and tight fitment. Not going anywhere, but if anything does happen, I will remove the scale, put that second screw in there because they do have it tapped on that side. I don't know if you have to put that in first, but I would think you would. Yeah, because it's going to sit underneath it. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but this one's got a little play to it. I'm trying to see what... My other one didn't have that. It was a little bit tighter in there. I don't know. I'll look at it after the video, but that's as, as easy as that. The quickest scale swap I've ever done, on camera at least. And yeah, let me know what y'all think about this. It, camera and my lighting's not gonna do this any justice because natural light is really where this is gonna shimmer. It kinda looks more matted but it really shines in the light. Next we have the CJRB Hectare. I reviewed this one a while back. Absolutely love the knife. Excellent value knife in my opinion. ARPM 9 steel drop point blade that's very slicey. It's got thin blade stock. It's got a very well dialed crossbar lock. The tension is perfect. Very smooth. You can reverse flick these. It's comfortable. It's very lightweight. It's got deep carry reversible pocket clip. Well, I got a new kind of funky one that's going to be coming out pretty soon. And here it is. This is called their spray paint finish. You have this super bright yellow. I'm guessing it's like a PVD coated blade. And it's thick, thick on there. You can feel it. And you have the green pivot, yellow hardware, yellow body screws, and a yellow pocket clip. Definitely not going to lose this one in the woods. Um, it's definitely, I, I like different and, you know, I, I like that we have companies doing stuff that's just kind of, you know, kind of comical, um, kind of cool at the same time. And I, I think the Hectare is a, a wonderful knife. It's just like this little CJRB mini pyrite, same spray paint finish, uh, except they did aluminum. They did it over the aluminum scales. You have the red blade, pretty wild looking. Kind of going along with uh, the crazy dessert warrior theme, donut theme on all the other stuff. All the other knives, they're just going a little bit different route. 
and I like it. I like that they decided to go a little bit different instead of joining in on that. I don't know if they, I think they might have made a donut sprinkled knife. I'm not sure, but I like how they, they just went a little, little crazy on this one. I love this knife now. Uh, my original one, the aluminum scales are a little too slick, but this painted finish definitely gives me a lot more grip. And I'm not as worried that it's going to slide out of my hand or anything. And I love, love the mini pyrite. I think these are actually available. These, like I said, should be coming very, very soon. If you were interested in one of these. Yeah, pretty cool. Whatever is available, I will have it linked down in the description. Next, we have a brand new model for CJRB. And this is the Prado. You can get it with G10 scales or wood scales. Uh, these are ebony wood. You can also get it in rosewood scales. This is a larger knife. It's got a beautiful clip point blade. This is a Ray Laconico design. And this thing is very, very lightweight. I was, when I first saw it, I was like, that's a pretty big knife. It's probably going to be pretty, you know, heavy in hand. No, this thing, especially with those wood scales, is, I think it's like 3.1 ounces or something like that. You go pivot to pivot with the Rat 1. It's got about the same blade length as the Rat 1, a little bit shorter handle. So Rat 1's a pretty larger knife. I think it's a really attractive looking knife. Now, if you get the wood scales, just know that they do flex a little bit. I mean, I've done some cutting with this, and when I'm squeezing hard, I can flex it. You know, this is more of a, you know, dressier look. I think if you're wanting it for some harder use or hunting or something like that, I would go with the G10. G10 is a, a more rigid material, especially being that these have inset stainless steel liners, so it, it's got to be kind of thin. And I'll test this one pretty hard to see if, you know, they end up cracking on me or anything. Very smooth action, perfectly dialed, crossbar lock action. That's one thing I, I was been impressed with CJRB and their crossbar locks. A lot of times when you see a company come out with their first crossbar lock, they're usually spongy. They The blade usually will flop out if you do like this. I can flip this one out like this, but I gotta really go hard at it. And it's not super hard to pull back. And then it really allows you to flip that blade out nice and fast. You can see that line, the plunge line goes right there to the end of that edge. So if I don't want this to flare whenever I sharpen it, I would have to open that myself. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah, let's see how that is. Yeah, they, they have this ledge right there behind that where the crossbar lock sits. So if I want to open that up, all I have to do is take material off here and go in that direction so yeah definitely interested to hear your thoughts on the Prado this one does have a pretty high tip it is sitting a good bit above that center line of that pivot so that that's gonna make that belly really travel up like that so if you're using this to you know do some finesse cuts cleaning skinning some small game or something you could do that and that's gonna work great anything on a flat cutting surface is gonna work great you do have a little bit of a straight edge portion to do in hand cuts, but doing long cuts, say into cardboard, you may slide out toward the end, being that this comes up as high as it does. But overall, I think it can make an outstanding EDC knife, especially how lightweight it is. This is the Remet Seahorse. This is a medium sized knife. It's got peel ply G10 with some uh, milling on the inside here, here. And they got some nice chamfering all the way around. You had a <laughs> geared backspacer that does sit a little proud of the scales. It's pretty grippy, but I don't really notice them. Hardware is flush. It is domed on the pivot side. You got a deep carry pocket clip. Does function nicely, and it sits pretty darn deep. All you see is this top portion right here. Now, I was kind of worried. I looked at this flipper tab. And it's about in the middle of that pivot. And I do like the way it's canted back like that, so it's gonna be comfortable. I'll just grab it and pull it back. You do have some gems that do grab the finger. But the detent is definitely dialed for that flipper tab. Comes out nice. To me, this knife is, is really reminiscent of the Urban EDC F5.5. They're almost identical in overall length. 
except the, the Urban EDC one is not a flipper. And the Seahorse, the blade goes down a little bit further. But you even have like that same silhouette in the handle. As far as the blade shape, that's a, that's a very classic blade shape. There's no crazy fullers or anything, no crazy swedges. You know, so it's pretty pretty plain, and the handle's pretty generic as well. So, do I think they copied off the F5.5? Nah. Like I said, this comes down further. You got a flipper on this one. The handle uh, scales have, you know, different stuff on them. This one is in D2 steel. I really wish they would have went with the 14C. But I tested their D2. It holds up nicely. Do have some jimping up top. I call it moderate traction jimping. It's kind of rounded over. It's not that grippy but you do have a nice guard from that flipper tab. My medium sized hands, I still get a four finger grip on it. Uh, the, my favorite use for this type of knife is this pinch grip and doing utility cuts, drag cuts and stuff like that. You know, doing some fine intricate cutting with this, you could easily do that. And then you do have all belly, but it, it's still, that tip still sits below the center line of that pivot. So when you're doing in hand cuts, it's not going to be too crazy when your hand turns like that. It's not going to slide out because it's just going to follow that belly to that tip. Your sharpening toil is perfection. That is one different, another big difference between the F5.5. <coughs> this one, the plunge line goes all the way to the back and it's already starting to flare back there after my first sharpening. This one, they brought that plunge line all the way to back right here. So you have tons of sharpening before it starts to widen. When I first got this out, I was like, sweet, you got the flipper and you got the blade hole. Well, I'm pretty sure being that they, they went with a low flipper design like that, they had to dial that detent pretty stiff in order to be able to get that nice flip out that low. Let's see because that's all the blade comes out before it has to take over. Now it is riding on bearings, so it can easily do it. And it, like I said, it's dialed in to where it comes out nicely, but that makes it to where I can't, I can't for the life of me reverse flick it. I can pinch it like that, but you can hear it pop. Let's see if you, very positive detent. Listen, so that detent ball is sitting pretty deep into the detent hole. I'm sure if I take it apart and maybe make sure there's no burr around that detent ball hole, I think that's what's causing that stick like that. Not really stick, it's just falling further down in there. Now, I do want it to be you know stronger if I wanna use that flipper tab. I would, I would have rather not even flipper tab and just had it to where I could use that, but that's just me. Now the price on these, whenever I saw them, I was like, ooh, that's kind of pricey for what this is. It was like maybe $50. Well, anytime you're on Amazon, definitely check to see if there's any coupon things for the, the knife or whatever you're buying. And the, I don't know if there still is, but there was a 50% off coupon. I paid 24 bucks for this knife. And at 24 bucks, yeah, I definitely think it's worth that. This is the Knife's Lander 1. And I also have the Knife's Lander 2. I swapped out these G10 scales that came with it with some new aluminum scales that they had on Blade HQ the other day. And they still, I went with the same blue. Blue's my favorite color, except these are more of like a royal blue. This is a lighter color blue. Hopefully you can see that. These look great. It's got like a starburst pattern on the aluminum. It offers some traction. The right amount of traction is not you know, overly grippy. Still nice and smooth. Now, one thing I did not notice until I swapped these scales out is unlike the Lander 1 with the fast swap scales, with the Lander 1, you just take that screw off, that screw off, and these two screws off, and the pivot, this hole is just a hole right there, so it just slides over that. So you don't have to do anything with the pivot. You can remove this and you can do the same on the other side. Well, that's not the case on the Knife's Lander 2. Lander 2, as you can see here, you have a countersunk and a hole right there. And I'm guessing it's because of the clutch lock. I'm not sure, but I was thinking about it and you, clutch lock or not, you don't have to have that. Now, 
I did notice, you know, like on the, the Lander 1, you have the two body screws, and on the Lander 2, you only have this one body screw. So this is acting as the second body screw, so this side doesn't lift up. Well, being that this is actually holding tension and this side, I don't even know if you needed this one. I thought that was just worth mentioning, you know. I, I think the fast swap scales, like on the Lander 1, I think that's a, a cool idea, and I like that. That way I don't have to mess with my action at all. Well, on this one, you know, you're gonna have to remove this screw and you have to remove this side because these are two separate screws. The actual pivot is D-shaped. So you take, take this one off and then take these off and you can pull it off. It would have been a lot nicer if they would have, you know, made that hole all the way through. So all you do is take those off and you're not messing with the action. I had to dial the action back in after I finished. Not the biggest deal, but just something I want to let y'all know. And we got a new flashlight in from Sofern. This is the IF23. I told them they, they, they messed up. It was supposed to be the ST23 for Stasa 23. <laughs> they said he's gonna look into that for me. Uh, and I have started using this one so I can get ready for the review. And it's it's a pretty darn cool light. I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I've been enjoying the Sofern lights, especially for their prices. Um, I don't know what this one goes for offhand, but the last one that I reviewed on the channel, you know, it was a good light for a good price. This one's nice and bright. The UI is pretty darn user friendly. You have that side button here, the main output here, and then you have the work light here with like the frosted glass. You can use regular light on this spot and you can go through the color spectrum, the Roy G. Bibb colors from here. So. There's your blue, green, like a purple or dark blue, purple, like a, went to a teal to a green, yellow, orange, red, pink, purple. And I'm pretty sure you can make those flash and get yourself in a lot of trouble with the red flashing light. <laughs> Stay tuned for the full review on this one. All right, guys and girls, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to ask me down in the comments. I will leave links to whatever is available also in the description. And I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing Sunday. Y'all stay tuned. I have a really cool Amazon fixed blade video coming up. Maybe tomorrow I, I finished the testing on all 10 knives that are probably going to be in that video. We had talked about it before and it's like the best budget fixed blades that I found on Amazon last year. All right. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.